Hey everyone, we're back for lesson five. At the end of lesson four, I mentioned I want, want to add some provision to this code. I want this code to switch back to whatever layer the user had active prior to running the code. We're gonna get started on that in this lesson. Before getting st started, just check, check the code quickly, make sure it matches what I have here, your code does. I'm also gonna try to post this in the description below, so check for it down there before manually copying this into your file. Okay, so getting started here, the first thing I need to show you is the set queue function. What I just typed here is just our own symbol. Since the text is black, we know it's not it, we know it's not a command. See, if I type a command or a function rather, it appears in blue. Or say t for true, that appears in blue. If I type pi, that appears in blue. That appears as blue as well, right? So when we type our own variables, we're allowed to use a lot of different different uh, characters in these. Asterisks are okay, underscores. God, what else? Percent. I think most most stuff works. You have to go to Autodesk help files to know exactly what does and what doesn't. But we have a lot of flexibility there. So anyways, set queue user layer. Let's just set it to a zero for now. I'm gonna put this into my visual list console. So all I'm doing here is I'm double clicking on, on our uh, the symbol we just created and clicking add watch. Important concept in code is that zero isn't nothing. And I'm gonna show you what I mean. So now our, our custom symbol, our variable is nil. So in code, zero isn't nothing. Zero is a value. So keep that in mind when you're writing code. So if you create your own symbol, your own variable, and don't assign anything to it, it's always going to be nil at first. It's a hard concept at first understanding that zero isn't nothing, but if you think about temperature, for instance, zero degrees is a valid temperature and it's not nothing. I'm just gonna set the our layer to something else. How about just zero to make it easy? So when I assign a value to this um, to this symbol, that value can be a lot of different things. It can be a integer. A real number. I'm gonna add this to our watch just to make this uh, demonstration a bit better. It can be a text string. It can be true or false. If, if a statement is false in Autolist, as you might know, it might turn up as nil. And remember that nil is nothing, but zero is something. Zero is a value. So if, you're, if you've dabbled in other codes, you might be thinking about typecasting. At this level of Autolisp, you don't have to worry about that. And what typecast means is that you saw me switch this from a real to a string to an integer. Normally in some codes, you wouldn't be able to do that. You have to declare the variable as one or the other, but in, in basic Autolisp, Visual Lisp is a little bit different, but basic Autolisp, you don't have to worry about that at this stage, especially not for basic code. Okay, and one more important thing I wanna show you is user layer is a text string, but that text string has zero in it. So if I set this to one, 
that's actually a text string with the character one in it. That's not that's not the integer one. I'm gonna use the type function. So you can see when I use this type function, it'll tell me what type of variable our symbol is. In this case, it was a string, then I changed it to one. Now it's an integer. Let's change it to a real. And sure enough, real comes up. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of that. So one thing, more thing I want to show you, I'm going to show you half of this thing's function. This variable that we created, it's global right now. That means when we run the command and the command terminates, this will maintain its value during that AutoCAD session. We don't necessarily want that to happen. And it kind of clears the memory. It's not really concerned with AutoList because the programs are, are not very memory intensive. But anyways, if I put that variable here, it's now a local variable. It'll clear this variable whenever the command terminates. Okay, so I think we know enough to to have one attempt at improving this code. So we're going to set set our user layer variable to whatever the current layer is prior to the code or right at the start of the code. Okay, so that layer is zero, how about? Or it is zero, sorry. At the end of the code, what I want to do, I want to go set bar, C layer, user layer. In theory, this piece of code will switch the layer back after all this code runs. Now, just a heads up, it's not going to work. We're going to have our first problem solving challenge in this video series. But anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna load this code in, run it, and we're gonna see what it does. Okay, so it's creating our viewport, but it's not changing the layer. So it's not running this line of code for some reason. It's a kind of a strange behavior. So anyways, I'm gonna block this off, reload the code. Okay, now it's changing the layer for us, but it's not changing it back, of course, because we got rid of that little piece of code. So anyways, in the next lesson, we're gonna, we're gonna solve our, per, our first autoless problem. We're gonna do some problem solving. I'm gonna show you how to get this code working the way we want it.